everyone! So I am here today with a video on how to save money. I had the idea to do this video a little while ago, so I jotted down a whole bunch of things, but then the video never happened because I felt like everything I had down was um, pretty much common sense, I guess. I felt like there was nothing groundbreaking that I was sharing, so I didn't really want to go there because finances is a really personal thing and um, I didn't really want to impose what I do on any of you. But then a couple of you actually asked me on one of my previous videos if I could share with you how I save money and how I budget to make um, big purchases. So I thought maybe I will go back to the notes that I had jotted down and do a quick video on this. So I just want to preface this video by saying this is just what works for me. Everyone's financial situation is different and some of the choices I make may not be right for you. So just please keep that in mind as you're watching this video. So the first tip is something that I recommend everyone start doing today if you haven't started doing this already. And it's something that will really allow you to take hold of your finances and see exactly where you're spending your money. And that is, of course, to track your finances on a daily basis. Every single penny that you spend should be tracked. So this seems like a huge undertaking if it's something that you're not used to doing, but trust me, with time, it definitely gets easier. I've been doing this for probably 14 or 15 years, ever since I started working full time, and it has really, really helped me to understand where my money goes and to also make cuts when necessary. So this is how I budget for my annual savings targets, how much money I have sitting in a savings account that I might want to allocate towards a big purchase. So this is not going to be a quick fix. This is just a tracking tool so you can see where you spend your money so you can start making changes down the road if your financial situation isn't where you'd like it to be. If you do have a good handle on your finances, I still suggest doing this because it's good to know where you're spending your money in case you want to plan for retirement, say. You'll know how much you need to save for retirement to maintain your current lifestyle. So the way I track my finances is on an Excel spreadsheet. You guys know that I love Excel. I like developing my own tools. So I started this spreadsheet when I first started tracking my finances and it's kind of evolved and it's grown and grown and grown. So my tool is very customized to my situation and it's not something that is really easily explained. So if you're not really Excel savvy, you don't really have time to build your own Excel spreadsheet, there are tons of tools out there that you can use. There are some computer-based tools, some web-based tools, and also some apps for your phone. So for example, my friend just started tracking her finances and she uses an app on her iPhone. So it makes it really easy to just enter in what she purchased as she's buying it or maybe like a couple minutes later. What I do is I typically jot things down or I'll save the receipts and I'll log them the next time I'm at a computer. So it's really whatever works for you. Just try to get into the habit of logging your finances. So everything would be tracked including all of your income and all of your expenses so you know exactly what you're bringing home and also what you are spending. At the end of each month I also reconcile all of my credit card bills and at the end of the year I do a huge reconciliation of all of my accounts including my bank accounts, my credit cards, any additional savings accounts like my RRSP, my GICs, my stock accounts, everything gets reconciled at the end of the year. I also reconcile my cash, so I'll do a physical count of my cash at the end of the year. So I spent a lot of time on tip number one, so I'm going to try to sail through the rest. My second tip is to have a dedicated savings account. I started my account over 10 years ago and it's really helped me to save money. It's neat to see how it's kind of built up over time and I also get a higher level of interest from this account. So I have a main checking account where I do all of my transactions. This account doesn't earn any interest, so I try to keep it at a minimal level, enough so that I don't have to pay the monthly fee, but not too much above that because I feel like my money is just sitting there and doing nothing for me. Say I have $500 extra that I don't think I'll need for bill payments and things like that, I'll just move that over to my savings account. So it's in my dedicated savings account, it's earning a higher rate of interest, and I'm not tempted to spend it or to really touch it. There's no debit card or anything associated with it, so I can't go to a bank machine and withdraw money from that account. So once the money is in there, it's kind of untouchable. I can still transfer it out, but I have to make a concern effort to do that and it also takes a few business days. 
The third tip is something that I strongly believe in and it's something that is not easy to do. It really depends on your financial situation, but that is to pay off all your debts. I'm not only talking about credit card debt because that one is pretty much common knowledge, I think, because the interest rate on credit cards is so high if you keep a balance, but I'm also talking about um, if you have a car, if you have a house, if you have student loans. It's a little more difficult with a bigger asset like a car or a house or a condo because your income may not allow you to pay it off right away, but pay it off as soon as you can. So what we did with the condo is every time we had um, sufficient money set aside, we would put in a lump sum payment to pay off the condo faster. So we're gonna get into some house talk now, so please bear with me if you're not in the stage of um, purchasing property yet. I will make this very brief. Our mortgage agent put us on a 15 year amortization schedule. I wanted it shorter, but she was like, you know, just in case it's better to go with a longer amortization and try to pay it off sooner in my mind I wanted to pay off the condo in five years so that's how I structured my own payments and my own schedule so we took advantage of pretty much all of our prepayment provisions and then at the end of the five-year period we just paid off the entire thing because there really wasn't um, that much balance remaining and we were fortunate to buy in a time of extremely low interest rates so we got a great great interest rate and we were able to pay off the principal much faster. So I know what some of you may be thinking. You're thinking, where am I going to get the money to pay off my debts? Where am I going to get the money to save? Because I know that a lot of us do have struggles with finances and I was like that as well. When I first moved out from home, I was 18. I was really struggling to make rent some months. I was working only part time because I was going to school full time and sometimes the money just wasn't there. I actually had to cancel all of my credit cards because I just felt like I was spending beyond my means and I didn't like that feeling. I was struggling to pay off my credit cards, so I canceled them all. So I just basically lived paycheck to paycheck, but when I got my full time job, uh, things started settling down and I started tracking my finances and I'm in a much better place now. So I want you guys to know that if you are struggling with your finances, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. It is possible to get out from under that. So my last two tips are going to be ways that you can get more money to put into your savings or to pay down your debt. So the first thing, of course, is to reduce your expenses. And this is where tip number one comes into play again, because once you start tracking your finances for a fair bit of time, even three to six months though would be enough data, take a look at where you're spending your money. For a lot of people, a lot of money is spent on food and drink. So do you go out to the bar with your friends? That's probably 30 to $50 minimum each time you go. Do you go to Starbucks every day? That could be five to ten dollars every single day. Do you buy your lunch every day? That could be five to fifteen dollars every single day. So take a look at where you're spending your money and maybe instead of going to Starbucks five times a week, go once a week as a treat. So that's basically what I do. I go to Starbucks maybe once a week or once every two weeks. It is not frequent whatsoever. Can you pack your lunch instead of buying it? Can you entertain at home or at one of your friend's houses instead of going to the bar? Take a hard look at your subscriptions. I'm not just talking about subscription boxes like beauty boxes and lifestyle boxes. So if you have some of those and they're not bringing you that much joy anymore, maybe just cancel them. But I'm really talking about anything that requires a monthly payment. So do you have a landline and a cell phone? Maybe you can get rid of one or the other. Do you have cable television? Cable television in Canada is extraordinarily expensive. My husband and I were paying upwards of over a hundred dollars for both internet and cable TV. So we took a look at it and we cut back. Now we have internet and we stream everything else. We don't have cable television anymore. So another big expense that we were able to eliminate was the car. So I know this isn't feasible for everyone, but the point is to look at your finances and see where you're spending your money and where you can make some changes, then go ahead and make those changes. Even if they're against the grain or a little bit unconventional, it has to 
should be what works for you and your lifestyle. So my husband and I live and work in downtown Toronto and the car was just taking up space and it was an added expense that we didn't need. So we sold that and then now we just rent a car when we need it and we actually save a lot of money by doing that. My very last tip on where you can get some additional money to put into savings or to pay down your debts is to sell any old stuff that you might not need anymore that someone would pay for. So if you have clothing, handbags, or shoes that you no longer wear, I would go ahead and try to sell those. If you own a house and you have a basement full of stuff that you've collected over the years, or if you have furniture in storage, there's always people looking to buy furniture, so you can definitely make a little bit of money that way, and you can also clear out your clutter in the meantime, which is another thing I'm really passionate about lately. I also mentioned that my husband and I sold our car, or rather he sold his car. If you have books, DVDs, video games, um, electronics, you can always try to sell those as well. We sell a lot of our old camera gear, so we were able to make back a little bit of money. So those are basically my tips and tricks on how I save money, and I would love to hear some of the things that you do and some of the money-saving ideas that you may have. So that is it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and until I see you next time, please take care, and bye for now.